Hi, welcome to Dr. Pat TV. In this uh, section, we're looking at uh, the slope idea of derivatives, uh, slopes over a small interval. That's what we'll be playing with. And so kind of to recap, we've got uh, three types of rates of change that we're playing with, uh, three types of uh, slopes. Our first uh, rate is the overall rate of change, and that's from time zero to any time on the graph. Uh, quantity zero to any quantity, x equals zero to any x value. And graphically, what that looks like, that looks like a uh, diagonal line starting at the origin, going and connecting to uh, the graph at any point. We've got a second rate of change, that's called the average rate of change, that's between two distinct points. And when you uh, connect uh, two points on a graph, you're making a secant line. And the third rate of change that we're looking at is the instantaneous rate of change. We're basically saying that's only at one point, and that's uh, represented by a tangent line. And so that would be a tangent line is when it uh, touches the graph at one point uh, for a very small section of the graph. It could actually cross the graph to the far left or to the far right of the graph. We don't really care. But for a small section of the graph, around the point that we care about, it's only touching the graph at that one point, and then the slope of that line, the tangent line, is basically the same as the slope of the graph. You can't tell the difference between the tangent line and the graph when you're looking at a very close region around that data point. Okay, so I wanted to go back to an example I've done in a previous uh, section. Uh, this was the graph of students falling asleep, the percentage of students falling asleep. Uh, the, uh, the dean was talking to the professor about it, students were complaining, and we were trying to analyze this data. And using overall rates of change, that would be from this time zero here to any data point, the professor could actually say that the graph is getting less steep, these diagonal lines are getting less steep as the uh, time goes on and that would be an indication of hey students are not falling asleep as bad and so we didn't like the professor using that kind of argument and so then we also played with the secant line so we did kind of like five minute segments or ten minute segments and um, that wasn't uh, it, it worked, and we also found out that tangent lines, you lose information in between the times uh, if you have a really bouncy graph. And so what we're going to look at is the instantaneous rate of change. And so what I've got here is a tangent line here at 5, tangent line now at 10, the tangent line at 15, the tangent line 20, then 25, then 30. Basically what I'm looking at here is I got a whole bunch of tangent lines it's a whole bunch of tangent lines and each of these tangent lines they're increasing and so the slope of these tangent lines are positive that's indicating that people are falling asleep and so if we use the instantaneous rate of change that tangent line slope basically it's very hard for the professor to try and weasel out of it we've got some good evidence that things are falling asleep and that's the basically the, goes along with the idea that we can see this graph is increasing the whole time, basically, except for this little down part. Maybe there was a good joke or something like that, and so kind of woke some people up with some chuckles. But other than that, we're looking at a graph that's usually increasing all the time, and that would mean that its slope of the tangents would all be positive, and we've got these things. Uh, it's going up for a graph. Okay, so that's how we could use the tangent lines. The next question that I've got here is, let's actually do a calculation. So I've got this graph and I want to find the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 20. And so what would I do to find that? Well, the first thing I would do with my ruler is I'd try to line my ruler up here at time, time 20. I would try to line it up so that the ruler is going in the same direction right here as the graph. And if I draw a line, you can't tell the difference between my line here, the tangent line, and the original graph here at time 20. That's a good tangent line. The graph and the line are going in the same direction. Sure, the tangent line crosses over here, way over here at 7. It crosses over here, way at 46. But that's not what we care about. We care about a small region. That's what we deal with tangent lines. We're only caring about what's happening around 20. And this is a good tangent line because it's mimicking what the graph's doing. Okay, so that's the first thing you do to find your instantaneous rate of change. When you've got a graph, you draw a nice tangent line.
Then the next thing you do is you pick two points off your tangent lines. I happen to have uh, zero 06 here as my guess for that data point on the far left. And I also have this nice 2020 point right here. You just pick two points. Sometimes I pick the point that we're actually playing with at time 20, and sometimes I don't. It all depends on whether I could read the graph really well. And so I got these two data points. You do your change of uh, uh, outputs over the change of inputs. You're changing the percentage of students over the change in time. And when I do that, I get a slope of 0.7. Uh, that's a, a change, uh, rate of change of 0.7% of those students, uh, percentage points. And so that's an example for finding it. And so here are basically my steps for calculating the slope of the tangent. You draw your tangent at the given point. You pick two points on the tangent line. That's key. Don't pick two points on the given graph. It's about the tangent line. So make sure you pick points on the tangent line. And then you're just finding slope. So then you're just basically doing change of y's over change of x's. Do that calculation and you have your slope for the tangent line. Okay, so that's going to do it. Oh, no, I've got one more example here. Sorry about that. Um, hey, what happens if you're doing uh, a table? You don't have a graph. It's really hard to make the graph, uh, uh, to make instantaneous rates of change. So when you're doing it from a table, technically, you're not actually getting the math theoretical instantaneous rate of change. What you're doing is you're getting a good estimation. So in the business world, what you like to do is, is if you want to find the instantaneous rate of change at time three, a good rate of change that way, then basically here's what I do. Uh, if I'm looking at time three, on a table, what we'll play with is I'll take the uh, data point to the right side, the data point to the left side, and just kind of find the average, the average rate of change between those two. And I'm hoping that with the, my data point in the middle, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to get that right in the middle kind of thing, kind of doing an average on both sides. So a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and then hope that that uh, slope that we calculate here by doing change of y's over change of x's, that slope then is going to be uh, a good estimate of what happens in the middle. And so um, that's how we do it with the table uh, data. So that's where I'll end it off today. Uh, talk more about this uh, whole instantaneous rate of change in another section. Thanks.